On January 8, the whole world paid attention to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida to see ULA's new launch rocket, Vulcan Centaur, conduct its first mission. Its payload this time, namely the Peregrine Moon Lander, was expected to be the first American spacecraft landing on the moon in over 50 years. Unfortunately, the HALO didn't belong to the Peregrine and her companion Vulcan rocket because the spacecraft suffered an anomaly leading to its failure. However, it turns out to be good news for SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and its lunar lander payload. Nova C, as both will have the opportunity to write their names in the United States aerospace history through the next month's mission. If the Vulcan Centaur and Pergrin cannot do wonders for America, it is time for the Falcon 9 and Nova C to make it happen. The space race now is divided into two poles, China and India scored moon landings while Russia, Japan, and Israel ended up in the loner trash heap. So how about the United States? On January 8, the space community got excited as the United Launch Alliance successfully launched its new Vulcan Central rocket from Cape Canaveral at 2.18 a.m. Eastern Time carrying a United States made moon lander with NASA science and research payloads on board. The rocket's primary payload is a Peregrine Lunar Lander. Part of NASA's commercial lunar payload serves as initiative and manufactured by Pittsburgh-based firm Astrobotic. It's part of a NASA-supported effort to kickstart commercial moon deliveries as the space agency's focuses on getting astronauts back there. There are scouts going to the moon ahead of us, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. If Peregrine completes its task, it means the United States will achieve the first successful moon landing since NASA's final Apollo mission in 1972. If not, it could cast a shadow over the space agency's lunar program and astrobotic. Of course, no one desires that. But unfortunately, everything is not always smooth. The Peregrine lander has suffered a malfunction in the propulsion system, causing the craft to lose fuel and critically endangering its mission. The company posted that the first signs of danger early Monday when after a stage separation from the Vulcan Center rocket the lander failed to face its solar panels to the sun. The company said it improvised a maneuver to do so, but after a period of expected communication loss, Astrobotic reported that the malfunction had caused rapid propellant loss. The company says it's looking at alternative mission profiles and maximizing the science and data we can capture. Does that mean NASA's plan to return to the moon was a failure from the first step? Well, not really. Keep in mind that NASA has funded a small fleet of such privately developed lunar landers, and Peregrine is just one of them. Sometimes we really need a brave pioneer whose sacrifice will give another one the chance to be the first. Next, before continuing, if you found these informations useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, Let's get back to today's episode. Yeah, turn your eyes to SpaceX Falcon 9 with its lunar lander payload. The Houston-based company Intuitive Machines is expected to use a SpaceX Falcon 9 to launch its uncrewed IM-1 mission from Cape Canaveral with the aim to land on February 22nd, a day before Astrobotic is scheduled to land on the moon. However, the company didn't say which date it was targeting for launch. IM-1 is the company's first lander mission and the first that is part of NASA's commercial lunar payload services program, where the agency buys payload space on commercial landers. IM-1 is a carrying five NASA payloads as well as six commercial payloads from customers ranging from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University to artist Jeff Koons. The previously scheduled launch window is between January 12 and 16. The change in launch date is due to unfavorable weather conditions resulting in shifts in the SpaceX launch manifest and bad condition at Launch Complex 39A, the launch site for the mission. Several launchers ahead of IM-1 on that pad, including the Falcon Heavy launch of Psyche, were delayed until December 28, 2023. IM-1 is required to launch from LC-39A because only that pad is configured to fuel the lander with methane and liquid oxygen propellants shortly before liftoff. The company's Nova Sea Lunar Lander remains ready. Intuitive Machines delivered its IM-1 mission Nova Sea Lunar Lander 
to Cape Canaveral, Florida, earlier this month. Since arriving in Florida, the IM-1 lunar lander has completed the major system tests, verification, and certification milestones and is prepared for integration with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. According to the plan, the lander will separate from the upper stage 32 minutes after launch and begin a five-day journey to the moon. A day after going into orbit around the moon, the spacecraft will attempt a landing at Malapert Crater, about 300 kilometers from the lunar south pole, requiring specific lighting conditions that are only available for a handful of days each month. We are ready to go, Tim Crane, Chief Technology Officer of Intuitive Machines, said. Engineers completed all testing of the vehicle's hardware and software ahead of shipment with no remaining issues to deal with before launch. We're really pleased about where we are. I am one seeking to become the first non-governmental spacecraft to successfully land on the moon, Bereshit by Israeli Venture Space IL. Crash trying to land on the moon in 2019. While Hakuto RM-1 from Japanese company iSpace crashed in a landing attempt on April 2023. Fewer than 45% of lunar landing missions dating back to the beginning of the space age have been successful. But Intuitive Machines executive expressed confidence in the changes IM-1 will make it to the surface successfully. I feel really good, said Crane. He noted the company paid close attention to failed landing attempts to see if their Nova C design was also susceptible to similar failure modes. Steve Altimus, chief executive of Intuitive Machines, estimated the odds of success at upwards of 65% to 75%, higher than the historical average. That's based, he said, on the experience the company has built up with key technologies on the lander, such as precision landing and its propulsion system. It is also based on lessons learned from those failed missions. Each of those things that we witnessed in terms of anomalies that caused the failures of those missions, we have internalized, he said. Therefore, I think our odds are higher. If this mission is successful, not only will NASA and a small company like Intuitive Machines get the benefits and reputation they want, but SpaceX will also benefit from this. At that point, SpaceX will surpass its competitor, ULA, to become the first company to have the first lunar lander payload successfully landed on the moon. This plays an important role in SpaceX's ambitious 2024 plan. 2023 is a memorable year for SpaceX as they launched 96 orbital missions in 2023, a big jump from its previous high of 61, which was set a year earlier. Among that, 91 launches were conducted by Falcon 9, which was more times than in the entire first decade after the rocket's debut. Along the way last year, SpaceX landed its 250th orbital rocket booster, as well as launched and landed a single rocket 19 times, continuing to push the boundaries of reusing rockets. SpaceX also set a new record for the shortest time between orbital launches, as just under three hours, which represents the tightest time between Florida launches since NASA's Gemini 11 mission in 1966. On the average of victory, the company is planning another big leap this year, one that will take it above the century mark. It is to increase the flight rate to about 12 flights per month, or about 144 flights, in order for that goal to come true. First of all, SpaceX needs to promote its reputation through national scale projects like the IM-1 mission. It's safe to say that with the thick experience in advanced technology, the Falcon 9's victory in the upcoming flight is off the table. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications feature so you're always staying tuned with any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you in the next time.